today we'll discuss about human immunodeficiency virus or hiv virus or hiv infection among the children so the human immunodeficiency virus infection that is also known as acute immunodeficiency syndrome and this is a group of condition which is mainly caused by the infection with the hiv virus and let's see what are the causes of hiv in child so most of the time the children they get the hiv infection from their mother uh during the time of pregnancy or during the childbirth process or through the breastfeeding and uh, women if they are tested positive during the pregnancy period we can provide them with the medical treatment and this will lower the chance of passing the virus into their babies and this is the best method through which uh the transmission of hiv from the mother to the child can be reduced and most of the time the children will get the infection through the sexual abuse or any rape etc and in some countries the child marriage is culturally accepted and a young girl can get hiv infection from her old husband and even she can pass the infection to her children also then if the child is very younger age and she is participating uh, in, in any kind of sexual activity the chances of getting hiv infection is very high and apart from that the transfusion of hiv positive blood or any injections or use of any unsterilized needles can also transmit the disease from the adults to the child and which is most commonly seen among the poor countries okay and let's see what is the pathophysiology of the disease so aids is caused by the hiv virus and this infection will cause a progressive destruction of the cell mediated immunity so usually the cd4 helper cells are responsible for maintaining the immunity of the human body so here in hiv once the organism is getting infected with a man the organism can or the hiv virus which cannot live independently it need the help of some other cells so they will at, uh, attract the cd4 cells and slowly they will attach with the cd4 cells and then slowly they will destroy the cd4 cells so the main function of the t helper lymphocyte is to provide pro immunity to our body so when there is a destruction of these t helper lymphocytes the immunity capacity of the individual will get lost so the hiv infection passes through a series of steps or stage before it progress into aids infection so when the cd4 lymphocytes count fall below 200 cells uh, we will say the hiv host has progressed in the stage of aids okay and aids is a period where the individual is having a very severe deficiency in the cell mediated immunity and he is capable of developing uh, certain opportunistic infections and let's see what are the clinical stages of hiv infection so first stage is zero conversion illness so this stage which usually develop 1 to 6 week a uh, weeks after acquiring the infection and the symptoms will be same like a flu or a cold then followed by the zero conversion illness there will be asymptomatic infection stage so here the virus replication will begins very slowly cd4 cell and cd8 lymphocytes uh cells count will be very normal and usually in this stage there won't be any uh, much clinical manifestations and the patient can stay in this period for a long period of time and the third phase is persistent generalized lymphadenopathy so here uh, the lymph nodes of the child may start to swollen and which may last up to 3 months and if we assess for any reason for the lymphadenopathy there won't be any associated reasons for that and next is symptomatic infection so this is the stage which is manifested with the symptoms of hiv so in addition uh, because of the low immunity there will be opportunistic infections will also develop and this collection of symptoms and sign is known as aids related complex and followed by the symptomatic infection the person will be entering into a stage of aids so this stage is mainly characterized by severe immunodeficiency and which is associated with the life threatening infections and certain kind of tumors so here if you assess the cd4 cell count it will be below 200 cells then there are a small group of uh, children or the patients they will develop aids very slowly and these patients are known as non progressors okay and let's see what are the major clinical manifestations we can find out in the child so usually they will be failure to thrive that is uh, they won't gain much weight or uh, according to the growth chart their growth doesn't take place 
and they will be having a developmental delay milestones achievement will be delayed then brain and nervous system will getting affected because of that only the child may be having seizures or trouble walking and most of the time they will be very sick and childhood illnesses will be there like an ear, ear infection then flu diarrhea cold etc then if you assess the lymph nodes they will be an enlargement of the lymph nodes for more than 3 months the lack of energy weight loss then frequent fever because of the immunodeficient state then yeast infection like oral candidiasis or vaginal infections will be there there will be persistent skin rashes will develop then pelvic inflammatory diseases for the girl child will develop and short term memory loss and apart from that there will be opportunistic infections like pneumonia tuberculosis all these symptoms the child may develop because of the severe immunodeficient state now we'll see how we can diagnose this condition so here it is mainly based upon the uh blood test so apart from history and physical examination blood tests are usually carried out so in the blood test uh, we look for the antibodies against the virus produced by the uh, body so here it will take around 6 weeks to 1 year for the body to develop antibodies against the virus so usually in the initial stage if we do the diagnosis the patient person or the child will remain negative only and elisa that is the most common uh, examination the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay which is mainly used to detect the hiv infection and if the elisa test is positive a uh, western blood test has to be carried out to confirm the diagnosis and suppose if the elisa is negative the test has to be repeated after 3 months because i already said you in the early stages it will take around 6 months to develop the antibodies against the viral virus in the body hence if we do the elisa examination in the initial stage the test may remain negative only but if it is remain the test has to be repeated after 3 months and if the elisa is positive then western blood is done to uh, confirm the diagnosis of hiv but it is very weak uh, test hence it is not used much now okay and next apart from that viral load tests are also carried out so these tests will helps to identify the amount of hiv viruses in the blood so there are uh, various technologies that is rt pcr then branched dna the nucleic acid sequence based amplification assay we call it as uh, nasba so all these Uh, studies usually carried out and the basic principles will remain same for all these tests and they will helps to find out the amount of hiv infection in the blood so this all about the diagnostic method so regarding the management we'll study in detail in the next class okay thank you